What's up? Today, you are going to learn a few very important motorcycle skills you should be practicing to keep yourself safe while you're riding. It's riding season. We got a lot of new riders coming up, which is very exciting. It's warm. It's nice. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. The first skill you're going to want to practice is the emergency braking. This one is a lifesaver, guys. If you're just starting out riding, this is the number one skill you should be practicing, without a doubt. Um, this is something I did a lot when I started riding back in 2015, nine years ago now. That was a long time ago. So it's real simple. What we're going to do is we're going to find a nice open area, kind of like this. <laughs> Learn how to use our clutch. I got this mighty stick here. I'm going to toss it kind of there. That's my marker. Okay? Very easy. You mark down a little area. And then you start practicing. Now what you're gonna wanna do is approach the stick. Second gear, maybe 25 miles an hour. As soon as you cross the stick, hit the brakes as competently as you dare, as hard as you dare, and come to a stop. Use the engine braking while you're doing it. Don't pull in the clutch as soon as you hit the brakes. And uh, yeah, you'd be surprised how quickly you can stop your bike. Whoa! <laughs> Stick hit a bush. Gotta be careful with that. <laughs> Guys, that's, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. Just second gear, approach the stick. Boom. Again, try to pull in the clutch and go down to first so you can then pull away nice and smooth again. Trust me, this might be boring and you're like, oh my God, I don't wanna sit in a parking lot and just practice hitting the front brake. But it would be nice if you hit the front brake and you know you can stop in time because you know how to use your front brakes because that's the number one thing that's going to save your bacon on a motorcycle. Trust me. Let's move on to skill number two. All right, the other essential skill I would say that beginners should be practicing uh, with the same setup that they had before in the parking lot, you have your stick of truth you have set down on your desolated area that you've been using to practice emergency brakes. But now, I want y'all to practice the emergency swerve. This is a big one. You see this a lot. Having the ability to quickly dip your bike out of situations besides braking is going to be huge, you know? Uh, Dan Dan the Fireman, shout out to him, talks a lot about escape paths, you know? And that's really important when you're riding a bike, having visibility, knowing you could go, you got this object, you go, whoa, I don't want to hit that. You just dip the bike the other way. and. You gotta remember, unless you give a tremendously, incredibly aggressive input, the bike wants to stay upright. Gyroscopically speaking, motorcycles really enjoy staying upright, which is why sometimes you see in racing situations, riders fall off the bike and the bike keeps going straight because the bike doesn't want to tip over. So again, approach the stick, maybe 25 miles an hour, just give it a quick little dip to the right, come back the other way, practice a little U-turn while you're doing it, and uh, dip to the left too while you're at it. All you need to do, because the motorcycle will counter steer naturally, is just push on one of the bars. So literally just and you'll just be right on your way and avoid that obstacle. If you have manhole covers like this too, if you want to just practice that really quick too, being able to quickly swerve your bike is 100% going to save your bacon one day. I've had to do that so many times while I'm out on the road with crazy car drivers. Now, Keep in mind, the faster you go, the less severe you can make the swerve, you know? If you try to swerve like that, going 70 miles an hour, the bike is gonna handle uh, less agreeably. You know, it's not gonna wanna dip into the corner as quickly as, uh, you know, if you go in 25 miles an hour. Because the faster you go, the more upright it wants to stay, right? So again, you just kinda go, just get used to that motion. Get used to the fact that the bike can just dip and nothing's gonna happen. You're not gonna crash, you're not gonna tuck the front end. You can dip this bike back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and nothing's gonna happen. Getting comfortable with that feeling of going straight and just dipping it back and forth is gonna be great. So if you're not comfortable approaching the stick of truth at you know, 25, 30 miles an hour, you know, just doing, just doing little swerves back and forth. Constant throttle is really nice too. 
that's really going to help you understand how to control this motorcycle. And again, try to do all this with as constant neutral throttle as possible. You don't want to be chopping the throttle while you're dipping because that's when you're going to upset the bike quite a bit. So again, demonstrate. We'll do second gear. We'll just swervey swerve, constant throttle, dodge the stick. That's how it's done. Easy peasy. Have you ever wondered how the hell does this guy get so many sweet ass bikes and just gives them away to people? Well, it's because there are thousands of people just like you on yamminu.co supporting this show. This is one of the biggest independent motorcycle shows on YouTube that is not corporately owned. It's just me and a small team of people. So if you wanna support what we do here, become a member over on yamminu.co. And my way of saying thanks is giving you the chance to win motorcycles just like this. You'll also get access to exclusive behind the scenes content, Discord server, and live streams with me where you can literally hang out, ask me questions, and do whatever you want. Hit that link down below on yamminoob.co and become a member today and support what we do on the show. Thank you so much for watching. Now let's get back into the show. This next skill is one that I've talked about extensively on the channel. Um, it's trail braking. Now, the way you want to practice this if you are an entry level rider is to approach it gradually. Uh, recognize that I'm taking these corners right now with no brakes. I'm going that slow. I'm going about 40 miles an hour, nice and easy. I don't need to change gears. So before you attempt trail braking, really make sure you understand the concept of flowing with the road and taking the corners as they come. So let's try it on this corner up here. We'll go in, we're gonna apply brake pressure before we get in there and we're just gonna hold the brakes and just see what happens. You apply a light amount of brake pressure on the front brake and you just maintain that constant pressure just to get the feeling for it. Just like this. And see, I can, I can even apply more brake pressure even mid corner and it's okay. And definitely ride within your limits for this one. You don't wanna be practicing trail braking at your perceived speed limit uh, without being on a racetrack because you have no runoff area that's going to be very unsafe. So that's gonna be the best way to practice your trail braking. Let's explore it in the next set of corners. So we're approaching this right-hand corner, doing third gear. We brake and we check it in. I still have my brakes on, still have them on, still have them on. I can, I can come to a complete stop if I want to. I'm not concerned at all because the thing that trail braking allows you to do is it allows you to tighten your line if you need to, right? Like right in here, if I'm on the brakes and I need to go where that tree is, I could very easily have kept turning that corner and done like a full 180. It would have been no problem, even though I went in a bit faster because I was scrubbing off speed the entire time, you see? And the most important thing too, this is an extra bonus tip, is keeping that front brake lever covered, right? If you're riding on twisty roads you're unfamiliar with, Having your front brake lever covered is so much more important than adding gas and trying to look fast and be fast for your buddies. Because as you practice those emergency braking maneuvers in the desolate parking lot, and you take them out here to the twisty road and you practice your trail braking, you're gonna be so much safer. I see so many crashes online where riders just, they go wide and they just don't know what happened. And it's like, all you had to do is carry the brakes and you could have just tightened, 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 tightened. Like, don't let the bike give up, you know? Don't let it run wide. So for example here, third gear, we're braking, braking. I see that I can make it, so I'm back on the gas, no worries. This next one, it's getting away from me a little bit, but I've got the brakes on and I can just guide it through. Brakes right here, it's downhill, so I'll stay on the brakes and then right here I'm back on the gas, no problem. It's another thing to keep in mind, extra bonus tip about trail braking is Uphill, downhill makes a big difference, right? You're gonna stop faster going uphill than you would downhill, so use your brakes more when you're going downhill. It's gonna make a huge difference, right? Going up the hill here, we'll grab second. Front end got a little light because I hit a bump. Watch the FedEx truck, cooking a fun pace here. Grab third, we're going uphill. Trail the brake in. We're wide open, it's a scrambler, baby, I got it. Nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, I don't recommend riding like that on the street. It's pretty stupid, don't do what I just did there. But again, if you have the skills and the confidence, you can ride at that pace and have some fun and keep it all within check. Because as you build that ceiling, 
you'll get faster, but what's actually happening is you're just able to operate at a higher rate of speed with much more confidence knowing that everything's under control. Got some gravel right there, and that's gonna bring us to our next point. Now, we've learned a lot of really important skills, but the number one skill that's gonna save your bacon on a motorcycle is just simply being aware and using your vision. Like I just mentioned earlier, not riding too fast and keeping within your skill set, operating at that 60 to 70% maximum on the street. I think 70 is too much to be honest. 60% probably is the right one. Um, that's gonna keep you so much safer, you know? If you have your front brake lever covered, you're aware, you're expecting things to go sideways, you're already way ahead of the rider that's like la la la, just thinking about whatever, not really focused on you know, what's going on in front of them, which is the reason you're riding a motorcycle. You wanna be present, you wanna be focused, you wanna be aware, you know? When I ride, subconsciously, my brain is taking in so much information, but I'm trying as actively as I can to consciously take in this information. For example, I know this road has a lot of weird little tar snakes, so I'm actively trying to avoid those, even if it compromises my line through the corner a little bit, which again, on the street line, it's much more about staying on the clean part of the road than it is about carving apexes and going fast. So minding those road conditions, being aware, using your vision, that's gonna be the number one thing that's gonna save your bacon. If you're the type of rider that is being more aware, you're using your brakes, you're thinking about what you're doing while you're doing it, you're gonna be way better off. Off the gas there a little bit, it tightens up. We're going pretty slow so we can handle it no problem. Up here, I'm gonna select the gear down. I'm seeing that it's bumpy. You see that, see that nasty stuff right there? Yeah, really unsettling my bike suspension. I wouldn't wanna hit that at full lean on this scrambler. <laughs> Go and hit that thing at 60 degrees of lean on the scrambler. I'll show you what 90 degrees of lean looks like on this bike. <laughs> but yeah, riding within check, you know, having some fun. That's the way to do it. You wanna be aware, you wanna stay vigilant, you wanna look out for things. That's gonna be the biggest tip I can give for you to stay safe on your motorcycle. All right, this next skill, it will save your life in terms of you not dying from embarrassment. That's practicing your figure eights and U-turns. As a motorcyclist, you should be able to confidently turn your bike around in a nice U-turn such as that, both left and right. Left is easier, so you can practice left first, and uh, you can be one of those riders that you always just <laughs> do U-turns to the left. I used to do that for many years before I got confident and just practiced the right-hand U-turns. Um, most riders tend to favor the left just because that's not where the throttle hand is, but once you get the hang of it, both left and right, will be a cinch. The one trick to make this easy, if you notice my body, I'm counterweighting the opposite direction. So normally on a motorcycle, we all like to lean into corners like Marc Marquez or Peko Banyaya, but uh, in the real world, most of the time, slow speeds, you're gonna be doing the counterbalancing. So you will actually bank it this way and then just turn that bad boy around. Easy peasy. When you're banking it left, um, a quick little trick if you want to do it to just give yourself some confidence and stability in case you drop the bike, get your left foot out a little bit. Just uh, go ahead and counterweight, bank the U-turn, put your foot out that way. If the bike starts to fall over, oh no, you can just catch it with your foot and you're good to go. One thing I loved to do as a beginner when I was starting out was just doing figure eights. So I would love to just come in, bank a right-hander. I did not counterweight because I'm lazy. <laughs> and then just bank a nice little left hand U-turn. And just practicing stuff like this, you know, it might seem silly at first. You're like, what is this really doing for me? But it's giving you more control over your motorcycle. You know, being able to just confidently back and forth, figure eights, maybe even you stop during the figure eight and you say, oh, okay, I wanna, you know, maybe I wanna continue my figure eight that I was doing. And you just continue the figure eight. So figure eights and U-turns, that's a great one to practice so that you don't drop your bike in slow speeds in a parking lot and die of embarrassment. This next technique might not seem like it's exactly life-saving, but it can actually save your bacon quite a bit if you're in the middle of traffic and stuff. That is the one foot down technique. So I've been preaching this for a long time. Shorter riders definitely pay attention to this one 
If you're coming up to a stop on your motorcycle, the most efficient way to stop your bike and keep it in gear and keep everything in check is the one foot down technique. So what you do is let's say you're cruising up, you're in first gear, crawling along. Oh no, I have to stop at that bush. What I'm gonna do is pull in the clutch, drag both front and rear brake, get this left foot, boom, have it down. I'm already in first gear, clutch is already in. I've got my right foot on my rear brake. I'm in a static position, which is quite nice. I can be sitting traffic, I can be there. If I need to take off, all I need to do is just put my hand on the throttle and ride away. So really, this is the best way to stop your bike. Again, it also provides shorter riders more leverage over the machine because you can tilt the bike over and get your foot down. If you're not comfortable flat footing your bike and you can very easily stop like this, practicing the one foot down is gonna be great. It also kind of just shows to the world that you're a little bit more of a sophisticated rider, shall we say, because that's how you should be stopping at all times. So again, we will just be cruising first gear, gotta stop, boom, locked in. I can very quickly take off again, stop, take off, stop, take off, so that's what I would do if I was a beginner rider. I would sit there and literally just keep practicing this until it's muscle memory and ingrained in my brain. I stop this way at every stop sign and I don't even remember to do it, it just happens naturally. So just take off first gear, let the clutch slip, and then boom, back there, take off, foot up, boom, back there, take off, boom, back up there. You don't wanna sit there and waddle and futz around with your clutch and all that. If you're in traffic, you wanna get going, get moving, keep the flow going, because if you're stalling people up and just not, you know, getting with the flow of it, uh, people are gonna get angry at you and people might run you over and, you know, getting out of quick situations is definitely a smart thing to do. So practicing one foot down, in my opinion, definitely a life-saving technique. Guys, what do you think? Are you practicing these things? Are you watching videos to help you practice? Let me know down in the comments below if you thought that this type of content was helpful or informative. Also, let me know and drop me a like down there. And join our community over at yammynoob.co. We're doing a lot of cool stuff over there. We have meme contests and live streams and a whole community, and you get entered to win some pretty sweet giveaway motorcycles. You're not gonna wanna miss that one. That's gonna be pretty cool for you. And then, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Ah, you've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. Aren't you just a special little cookie? Aren't you just something so great? Aren't you just, look at you, you're just so freaking cute. Why don't you go ahead and click on the next video? Why don't you go ahead, listen, hey, 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 I'm just, I'm just kidding around. Hey, 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 listen to me. Click on the video.